current services that we're providing by appointments is symptomatic STD, maternity clinic, problematic family planning, and birth control methods to pick up candy for Dental emergency, we are providing that by appointment, and health works, which is our alcohol drug testing program for employers. Our CAP services, which is community alternative program, it's a Medicaid program. Um, we're providing our social work um, management programs, and the WIC is open, um, and it's mostly done by the telephone, except if you need a breast pump, if you're a breastfeeding new mom. Environmental health um, is handling most of their services through the phone, but we'll go out if needed. And our school nurses are working with us to help um, with documenting and covering the, the mandate requirements of the public health department during this time. So um, I did get, uh, and if you have any questions or concerns about the Department of Social Services, Betty Battle is the person to contact. Her number is 641-7611. And our county has also closed our county buildings to the public, but you can still access the services by calling. Um, we also have drop boxes that are designated for, um, for the buildings. And on each building, is a, the phone numbers are listed to what, um, to the program that you need. And I did get one question. Why are manufacturers required, requiring shoulder to shoulder work despite positive tests from coworkers? Well, what we have been recommending um, industries to do during this time is to use the CDC guidelines, which does not allow that. And if that's a problem, you should call your local health department. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chappelle. Uh, this time I'll ask uh, Mr. Bill Hill, who's the Nash, Nash County Director of Health. I'm Bill Hill, Health Director of Nash County. And many of the things said, uh, that Karen Chappelle just said, I won't repeat, but they're excellent uh, types of advice to give. That you've all heard about those universal precautionary measures to take, which we've called public health measures for years. I will talk, since she's covered those areas, I'll talk a little more specifically to the cases in Nash County. We have had 27 cases. We just received two overnight, uh, two new cases that put us in 27. Um, geographically, I, obviously, I won't specifically talk about that for identifying reasons. But I think you might be interested to know that 48% are right here in the city of Rocky Mountain. Uh, uh, that's uh, about 13 of the 27. Uh, the, the racial mix would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 7 Hispanic, uh, 9 African American, and 11 white. Uh, the recoveries that I'm proud to announce are in 5 or 6 and just about relatively mild cases. Um, we do have uh, six hospitalized as I see uh, and, and, and certainly that would be local hospital and our surrounding hospitals. We do have uh, several that are uh, sitting home that are maintaining their illness in a home environment. You probably did hear many of you of code red last night in the time of our EMS section. We thought it was necessary to again remind our people at home and uh, staying at home or trying to get out a little bit to, to, to continue to stay at home. Only go out for essential business if possible. Um, this could have read uh, a announcement was saying that this is no way over. I know we read and heard about the heat coming Soon, maybe as soon as mid-April, uh, I'm sort of doubtful that we'll see that people coming that soon. But I will say that North Carolina and our surrounding counties, including Nashville, City of Rockland, have done extremely well. And I just send a lot of kudos out to the citizens <coughs> in our area, excuse me, that have really adhered to all these safeguards and public health measures that need to take. You see it all the time, and I know you can witness some violations, observe some of those, but by and large, our citizens have been here to these 
public health safety audit that we put in place. Uh, we obviously are having a lot of citizens to call with different concerns. I was asking our residents this morning, what would you say a primary concern might have been other than contracting the illness of the virus itself? And it's been a typical one is someone was sent home sick, possibly with coronavirus, and what do we do then? So obviously that is a big part of public health practice to have a confirmed case to make sure that we follow up on what we call trace contact as we can trace contacts. There we are involved with not only household contacts, but work environment contacts and those that are less close to that person, but certainly still contacts are not beginning. We are still testing every day on a drive-through like uh, testing site behind the health department. We did five today. We keep a number of pending with the state lab, the turtle lab has been close to 24 hours, but sometimes 48 hours before we get a turtle lab to receive that, uh, that particular test result. I will say, uh, as of this morning, in that standing from the hospital, the private providers and the health department, the 389 tests uh, conducted, of which in that standing 27 cases. So about 90, probably two or three percent, have been very seven percent of those have been positive. That's a slight increase in the last week. We were running around five percent positive rate. And now we said percent, but relatively low in the number of I do uh, pre predict that that will go up somewhat as sicker people come to us with an asymptomatic and have been in direct contact with confirmed cases. I'd be glad to answer a question or two if there are any or we'll just go. That's my report. And it, it's, uh, we are, I would say this we are doing these daily conferences. Uh, that are really orchestrated or narrated through the county manager's office. We're doing them seven days a week, 11 o'clock every day, which I know the mayor participates in. Um, we will certainly continue to do it Friday, tomorrow, and Saturday, and as we go through the weekend, and then the one on Sundays at 2 o'clock. So we have tried our best. We must have at least 40, 45 participants in those kind of uh, conference uh, communication meetings. That, Thank you, Mr. Hill. And the sign I'd like to hear from uh, Dr. Tisa Roberts. Hello, and good afternoon, everybody. I am here to talk to you a little bit about what OIC, that's Opportunities Industrialization Center, is doing. We are a federally qualified health center located in Rocky Mountain, and we're taking care of patients from the Nash and Edgecombe communities. We are um, continuing actually to take some walk-in patients. We have many patients that we serve that do not have access to phone, they don't have access to internet, and they might not even have access to transportation, so they walk. So we are still trying to make sure that we are able to take care of every patient that we serve. Uh, we have our temperature checks, we're asking questions before you come in for your visit. We're making sure that our lobbies are socially distanced or we have most of our chairs six feet apart. If you can't break them up, we have you with the do not sit in that particular area. Um, as providers, we are trying to move as many visits as possible to either telehealth visits or we're also trying to um, move as many visits to maybe even a car visit. Whatever we can do to keep all of our patients safe, to keep our staff safe. We want to be here to take care of the community, and we want to make sure we have providers to take care of the community as well. We are using our local hospital's respiratory disease center, and I'm forever grateful that they have come up with that to do our testing. And if you're sick, we're trying to keep you at home so we can keep everybody safe. So OIC, in addition to having clinics, we also are a resource for the community, for jobs, education, training, etc. Our staff is working from home and we're continuing to work with our, our patrons and our constituents and we're trying to make sure that they continue to have what they need during this difficult time. I like to say we're of the people, by the people, for the people, and we're by the, and for the community. 
So OIC is here, we're your community resource. We have not shut down, we're doing everything we can to keep you healthy during this time. I was asked one question from the media, and that question was, can a senior with a compromised immune system walk in their neighborhood? Remember, the CDC guidelines are now recommending that you wear a mask um, at all times, and we are encouraging people to continue to get their exercise. You want to make sure, without a doubt, that you are practicing social distancing. If you have any questions whatsoever about what you should and should not be doing, you should absolutely call your primary care's office and make sure you talk to your primary care doctor, because they're here to keep you safe. That is my report for OIC. Thank you for your time, and if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. All right, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. And uh, at this time, I'm going to ask like, Dr. Dean Isley, who is the president and CEO of NASH uh, uh, UNC Healthcare. Thank you, Mayor, City Council. Good afternoon. Um, I want to first thank the health departments uh, and uh, all the agencies that we have been working with uh, locally. Uh, and throughout the state. We've been working very closely with our local health departments, the state health department, UNC Health's uh, infectious disease experts, and the CDC throughout this uh, process. And these partnerships have been invaluable to um, your health system as we prepare for um, this crisis and taking care of our communities. Consistent with the health departments, Reports, our hospital has seen a steady increase in cases in the last week. We currently have six COVID positive inpatients in our hospital and six COVID pending uh, inpatients in the hospital. This, uh, the COVID pending means that we are waiting for their test results to come back. Uh, these patients all require medical attention. We have seen and treated many other patients in which we have been able to successfully discharge to their homes uh, and their primary care physicians and interactions with their health department to self-quarantine uh, while they um, maneuver through their disease. We have also uh, safely uh, discharged uh, two of our inpatients that were COVID positive uh, back to self-quarantine in their house for the rest of their treatment to be worked out with the health department and their local primary care physician. The other that we want you to know, that the Board of Commissioners wants you to know, is that your hospital is prepared. Uh, we have a local task force working around the clock to prepare for the various stages of this uh, outbreak and to ensure the safety of our patients, staff, and the community. We have specific plans to place COVID-19 patients in specially prepared rooms, designated to treat communicable diseases, and to limit exposure to the staff and keep other patients safe. We're already utilizing dedicated wards for the COVID pending and COVID positive patients and are continuing to expand those areas as we go through our planning and preparation process. We do have visitor uh, restrictions and screening in place at all entry points in order to protect our patients, our staff, visitors in the community and you can find the details of those restrictions and entry points on our website at nashunchealthcare.org. As you probably know, our staff and medical staff have servants' hearts and are in healthcare because they love to help people. Through this situation, uh, can cause fear and anxiety. Our staff are ready to do what, it need, what we need to be done to serve our community. We thank you for your efforts and as you make uh, preparation and as, uh, you remember social distance and you help to stop spread the virus. We thank you for your support and together we are stronger. I received a question related to um, can anyone receive a test for COVID? Um, and uh, that's a long uh, answer. I'll try to uh, answer in a few words. Uh, you really need to work with the health department uh, and your primary care physician. The CDC have recommendations on who qualifies for a test 
And so quite simply, right, you can't just ask for a test if you don't meet the qualifications, but your primary care physician, um, provider, or the health department can help you navigate through um, who qualifies for those tests, where those tests are administered, and how you can uh, have access if you do qualify for a COVID uh, testing situation. Mayor, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Isaac. This time I'd like to ask our Chief Corey Marshall to the stand. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Good afternoon, I'm Corey Mercer, Fire Chief of the City of Rocky Mountain Fire Department. The mission of the City of Rocky Mountain Fire Department is to serve all its citizens by saving lives and protecting property through quality and excellent service. During this recent pandemic of COVID-19, our department has continued that mission in a professional and safe manner. Our efforts have been both proactive and reactive to ensure that our citizens do receive the same level of service prior to this epidemic affecting our community. Since the onset of this virus, the department has temporarily suspended smoke alarm installations, car seat installations, station tools, and non-essential station visits. And being proactive, we have also altered the call take criteria for our 911 dispatchers. EMS calls that are COVID-19 related will be emergency medically dispatched with some follow-up questions. Some questions that you can be expected to be asked are, are you experiencing any flu-like symptoms? Are you experiencing a high fever? And have you traveled outside the community? Also, when person arrive, they will be in the proper protective equipment, which will consist of a mask and a glove, so please do not be alarmed. Personnel may also ask you to exit the structure, and while maintaining social distancing, they would then perform the initial patient assessment. All citizens are asked to follow all CDC guidelines for preventive measures against this virus. Please continue to practice good personal hygiene measures of washing your hands and cleaning your shoes when going outside. Sanitize common areas and always practice social distance. Pay special attention to your diet and build up your immune system. The best practice is to shelter in place and stay at home. Overall, there has been a decrease in calls for service since we have adhered to the governor's order. If we continue these best practices, I am confident that we will get through this pandemic together. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. At this time, I'd like to ask uh, Chief George Robinson, our police uh, chief here in our Thank you, thank you, Mayor and Council, for having me here. Good afternoon. I am the Police Chief of Rocky Mount, George Robinson. The Rocky Mount Police Department is committed to the safety and well being of our citizens as well as our employees. In light of the continuous surges related to the coronavirus outbreak across our state, the Rocky Mount Police Department is working hard every day to ensure that the members of our community are protected and safe as we try to reduce the spread of COVID 19. To assist us in this venture, we have initiated new protocols at the police department. Some of the protocols are related to calls for service, reports that can be taken by phone, will be taken by phone. An example of the reports are larcenies, shoplifters, shoplifters, where there is no suspects in custody. With our suspects in custody, we will respond as usual. Uh, to get more information on Services that have been altered, please go to our Rocky Mountain Police Department Facebook page and get a full detail of those services. In this instance, when we must respond to home, please understand that our officers are practicing social distancing as related to the CDC guidelines. So if they ask you to step outside, please do not hesitate and just comply. They're not only protecting you, but they're protecting the community and themselves. When transporting prisoners, and persons in our patrol vehicles. Our officers officer are encouraged to disinfect those vehicles at the beginning of duty, during their tour, and at the end of the tour. Once, if a vehicle is a shared vehicle, our officers will um, share those same responsibilities, which is to disinfect the vehicle after every use. 
keeping everyone safe at the top priority of the Rocky Mountain Police Department. For, fact, for clarification, I've seen a lot of comments and questions about curfew. There is no curfew in the city of Rocky Mountain. However, a stay-at-home order is in effect for the government. Gatherings should be limited to 10 people or less. Citations can be issued and arrests can be made. However, thus far, our citizens are voluntarily compliant, and that's what we're pushing for compliance, not citing or arresting anyone. Overall, there has been a decrease in cost of service. I thank our citizens for that. You're not only keeping us safe, but you're keeping us safe. It's going to take all of us to get through this pandemic. The Rocky Mountain Police Department will enforce the strict and the governor's order. For those of you who's not, who do, are not familiar with where the governor's order is located, go to governor.nc.gov and it should list what those obligations and those governor's orders are. To business owners, owners and chief of police, please wear your business responsibly. Patriots, please abide, abide by those required sanctions issued by the governor. The Rocky Mountain Police Department encourages all members of our community to take personal responsibility and follow the recommendations of the CDC, the mayor, and the government. Let's keep Rocky Mountain safe and healthy. I have received two questions from the media. One, where can you report covenants not following rules? 252972 is the police dispatch communication center. They will dispatch an officer to that location and he or she will see if that order is act, government's order is actually being violated. Question number two, can we take down bas basketball goals so people won't play? As of now, our citizens are complying. There have been a couple of instances where there have been citizens playing basketball and everyone has complied when requested. As I said, we seek compliance. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, and thank you for going over those statistics. Um, curfew has been one of the things that I've been asked the most on a consistent basis. Why haven't we declared it specifically me? And the answer is, I think that as a general rule, we are complying with the current rules that are in place. And I believe it's an unnecessary thing. Um, so with that, I'd like to invite our city manager up, uh, Rochelle Smaltoni, who can give us a tremendous amount of depth and information about how the city is running. And I want to thank you again and your team for all that we've been doing. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of council, and all that are watching. Um, as a result of the implementation of our continuity of operation plan a couple weeks ago, on any given day, the city staff is operating between 60 to 75 percent of capacity as a result of the stay-at-home and social distancing orders. This means that we have reduced the number of city employees and offices on crews and out in the field while striving to maintain the highest level of our municipal service delivery under these circumstances. Again, on any given day, the city workforce is operating between 60 to 75 percent of its normal capacity. Even with services that we deem to be essential, there are reductions in staffing just to abide by the social distancing requirements. As a result of this, there will be delays, but we are committed to doing all that we can to keep our employees safe and healthy, and we all appreciate your understanding and patience. Our citizens have done a wonderful job of staying connected during this pandemic. Staff has put an emphasis on sharing information regarding the excellent municipal services we provide on our website and various social media platforms. As a result, the Our City at Work campaign, which highlights city staff continuing its daily responsibilities, has gained a tremendous following on the city's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram platforms. Since the Our City at Work campaign launched March 23rd, more than 45,000 people have been reached on those platforms. We've even seen residents post their own pictures during this period, thanking our departments. Residents are encouraged to share their pictures and tag us on various platforms by using the hashtag 
I'll say it at work and hashtag Rocky Mountain. This week, we have also launched on our website our Citizens Resource Center, which is a one-stop for information related to the COVID-19 crisis. The website links citizens to information from the federal, state, and nonprofit services and is kept up to date with new information. Concerning the residential yard waste and bulk items, Environmental Services and Streets Divisions are working with reduced staff, working in two teams, alternating weeks to maximize employee safety and protect operations. With these staffing levels, residential garbage and recycling pickup will remain on a normal schedule. However, bulk and yard waste, including loose leaf collection, will take longer to collect. Residents are asked to place yard and bulk waste, including tree limbs, at the curb as normal. City staff will collect yard and bulk waste items as close to the normal collection day as possible. I'd like to personally take this time to thank our dedicated employees who have stepped up to the plate during this pandemic and provided the services our citizens deserve. I would also again like to thank our citizens for your patience. I have been given um, four questions, some of which I think I have um, answered. Uh, one of course is, is debris going to be picked up? Yes, it is going to be picked up. Uh, however, um, as I mentioned before, our operations now are down between 60 to 75 percent of capacity, so you can expect um, delays. Again, another question of what will be done about curbside trash. Uh, here I'd like to just emphasize that for, for us, our highest priority in residential collections, of course, is the residential trash collection. I shudder to think what the community would look like, the health problems that would result if we didn't place such a high uh, emphasis on collecting the residential garbage. And um, so that is our highest priority, of course, followed by the yard collection as well as the bulk items. The third question is, uh, can the city spray anything at night to diminish germs like they did um, for mosquitoes. Uh, this question is coming from someone that's about my age, because I remember <laughs> when Sid is used to um, spray this um, lethal gas, if you will, to, to kill the mosquitoes. Um, so the answer to this question, we have not thought about um, spraying anything in the community, not sure that anything um, spraying in the community would be environmentally safe or even would attack this particular virus. So we'll set that question aside. Are city leaders planning or have made sure employees are equipped with PPEs? Actually, the executive leadership team and I had this discussion this morning, and um, thankfully, the fire department um, has been able to access uh, additional masks and PPEs for the city staff, so you'll start to see even more staff, particularly out in the field and in the offices, uh, wearing masks. So with that, Mr. Mayor, I'll turn that back over to you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, City Manager, for all that you're doing. Thank you for your team, for the work that you're putting on. Um, I want everybody to know out there that we're receiving calls on a consistent basis from Facebook Live and other mediums that we can't really process to answer at this point in time. But please check our website uh, for the City of Rocky Mountain, and we'll be responding to each and every one of these questions uh, as we can. And so I would let, like to acknowledge our city council that are participating versus in this team, but also those that are present with us. We have uh, Andre Knight, council member, and uh, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Richard Joyner, council member, Richard 
Joiner and Councilman Doug B. Bullock. And I don't know if any of you gentlemen have anything that you might like to add to the conference today. I hope so the question and answer. Uh, my concern with the area council that uh, as I travel throughout the city, uh, my heart is sad because when you go into uh, certain convenience stores, grocery stores that are heavily located in African American communities, gas station, even our post office, drive through restaurants, especially fast food, and some manufacturing industries. They're not practicing the CDC uh, regulation. Um, I just left out of one of the novel stores and didn't have the uh, petition of uh, Neither did the employees have a mask on, a face covering, or gloves. And I asked the question, they said we're not allowed to wear them. Uh, wherever I see this throughout the city, I asked them a question. Uh, they said they're not allowed to wear or we have it. Uh, we're going to have our businesses operating in our city. And uh, Nash County Health Director just mentioned about code red or red, red, the red code. That we must stress, I don't know if we can uh, uh, pass an ordinance that we're going to do, do business. But those uh, citizens on the, or employees on the front line that are servicing our community, our constituents, that they equip them to do the service. Uh, most of these uh, employees are uh, single mothers females that have to go home to their children, uh, their grandparents, and they could uh, be exposed to the virus and then transpose uh, them to other uh, family members. So it's, it's this very concern that I see you in Rocky Mountain. And I don't know what we can do as a government body to make sure that these uh, businesses operate uh, uh, in, in throughout our city, that they are uh, following the CDC regulations and also the uh, executive order of our governor and the uh, executive order that I'm here, uh, that we adopted as a council and as a mayor. Uh, so I hope that we can uh, put some teeth in, some, in, in this enforcement because this is very devastating as we continue to try to curb this peak. Uh, I see that uh, it's going to be hit uh, pretty hard if we don't um, uh, follow these regulations. Thank you. I absolutely echo the same sentiments. This is uh, no joke. This is not a drill. Uh, this is a real thing. And we need to use judgment. We need to maintain social discipline, uh, separation. We need to absolutely wash our hands on a consistent basis. And if you are working on a frontline basis, um, let's start with calling 211, which is the governor's information line that may be able to connect you with some items of that nature, uh, tribal health departments. You know, communicate with us, I don't know that we have the answers, but I think we're all committed here to trying to find as many answers as we possibly can for everybody because every single infection is a big deal and a significant issue um, for the entirety of our community. And so, uh, with that said, again, I want to uh, end on a positive note that you know, this is a time of crisis, this is a time of unity, I believe, and that this is uh, a point in time that we continue to consider the CDC, we beat that home over and over and over. But I'd like to go over a couple of other announcements that I think that just are important to communicate. First of all, the National Archive Schools and National County Schools are providing free daily meals to all children in the area. These sites and hours are updated weekly, but the service will continue as usual. And now locate these sources for your family. Please text food in city to 877-877. Again, that's food in C, F-O-O-D-N-C, uh, or you can call 211. That's a number that's available to all North Carolinians to also connect these with resources that we have. Finally, 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 if you are exhibiting any kind of symptoms of the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, that looks like fever, cough, shortness of breath, please call your health provider. We've heard from a number of our officials here today. It is significant. It is critical that we self-isolate as needed. It is critical that we understand that the virus will spread very quickly. And it's something that we really, really don't want you or your family to have to experience. Now, if you're not feeling well, you don't have insurance. You know, that's a critical component for a large segment of our population here in Rocky Mountain, as well as in the country. 
you need to call your local federally qualified health center. In the city of Rocky Mount, that is the Carolinas Family Health Center. Call 252-641-0514. Visit them online at cfhcnc.org. Again, it's cfhcnc.org. And I believe the OIC may also qualify as a federal um, qualified health center. I'm not positive about that, but you may want to check on that as well. Yes. <clears throat> so I encourage all of you to stay updated with reliable government websites and resources. Check our website at rockmountnc.com, uh, visit our resource center at the top of the home page, and then you can also see uh, updates on my Facebook page, and I'm sure all of those on council as well. You know, so please, please, please stay informed, be safe, be well, and thank you so much.